viewers and welcome back to the SS Media as we always bring you to the latest youths that are in the country. And here with me, we have the president of the current president of the UTG of, of the University of the Gambia. And before going further, I will just allow him to introduce himself and tell us more about himself. Hi. Yeah, hi. Um, greetings, viewers. Uh, my name is Nyaning Kamanja, uh, the president elect of the 22nd Executive Council of uh, University of the Gambia Student Union and the outgoing vice president of social sciences and humanities students association thank you thank you so much uh, mr president and then a big congratulations to you uh, job well done and our first question that we are going to pose to you is what motivated you to be part of the uh, presidential election in the utg of the gambia 2024 yeah um thank you for that wonderful question um what inspired me is uh, several factors because um as far as leadership is concerned, as far as governance is concerned within the university structure, um, I've got a wealth of experience. Um, as I alluded earlier here, um, I'm the outgoing you know, vice president of Social Sciences and Humanities Students Association, um, the second uh, largest faculty-based association within the University of the Gambia, and have registered unprecedented success within and outside the University of the Gambia. Knowing fully well Social Sciences you know, um, Association uh, you will understand that you know um, it comprises of individuals with uh, different skills and abilities and therefore being the principal assistant to that association um, requires a lot of talents a lot of you know um, experience and it requires a lot of you know um, understanding what bureaucracy and governance and administration is so definitely from sosa i believe um, it is high time for us to reclaim the mantle as far as you know leadership is concerned because for far too long our leadership has been stifled uh, by individuals, you know, um, interest and also uh, political affiliation and other uh, reasons which believes that, you know, um, which I believe uh, do not promote um, inclusivity and therefore there cannot be participation within our students' community. And in order to register success, we must see university as one community. We must see university as the biggest body as far as student governance is concerned. And the union um, is bigger than a coalition. The union is bigger than, you know, alliance. The union is bigger than any other political establishment within the University of the Gambia. Until and unless we see this, I believe we can able to register success, unprecedented success. Wow. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Being a president is something that is not easy mm -hmm. because the, all the hope of the university, university students of the Gambia are on you. Yeah. So how do you feel and oh, what happened when the time that the results were announced that you are the winner and the current, you, you will be the president of the University of the Gambia? It's an amazing feeling. Um, even though I've experienced elections at social level, uh, like I said earlier, um, one of the second largest faculty-based association within the University of the Gambia. But um, the main union is a different feeling. Knowing fully well that, you know, uh, almost 7,000, you know, and some hundred students, you know, are going to the pools. And, you know, you emerge as the winner um, means a lot. It means um, they've highly trusted you as an individual. They believe you can steer your affairs because um, the president always sits at the governing council, which is the highest body within the university structure where policies are reviewed and formulated, where budgets, you know, are drawn. So in that, I believe, um, is the highest body it requires an individual, a president, that is going to echo the voice of the entire general student body, irrespective of your political affiliation, because we have a constitution, and that constitution stipulates or um, recognizes no political party, but instead the entire student community. So therefore, it is um, actually a mixed feeling. Um, I was happy, but I was emotional also, because um, it comes with it. And knowing fully well um, the history behind, you know, from uh, rejection by the Electoral Commission to being the president of the University of the Gambia. In fact, some people were calling, you know, crying because, you know, they know what I've gone through, you know, being rejected. I have to file for uh, pe the petition, you know, through the judicial tribunal. And then I was um, allowed, you know, to be back in the ring. And yet again, the Electoral Commission filed for a review for the second time, which means, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, litigations and, you know, legal battles, you know, you know, back and forth. 
it w well, I, I, I have a strong conviction that, you know, I am going to be back into the ring because I have every clear justification uh, to prove that, you know, I am eligible to contest in the forthcoming election, uh, which has just recently concluded. And now here you are as the president of the University of the Gambia. So it's like, I, <laughs> I, I can tell you for free, um, the history of Kwame Nkrumah, you know, Nelson Mandela, you know, they were prison you know, for 20-something years before they become president. And a clear testimony is just yesterday, mm -hmm. you know, in Senegal. Mm -hmm. Jomai was prison, mm -hmm. in prison. You know, <laughs> Usman Songo was in prison. Mm -hmm. But today, you know, I believe the will of the majority has manifested. Mm -hmm. So that is to every young individual in this country. Um, if you want to pursue your desire in, as far as leadership is concerned, mm -hmm. always be steadfast. Always be determined, be positive, and you know anything is possible. Never, never, never give up. So we, you, we have had it. Our president said we should never give up. Okay, so Mr. President, with regard to other coalition parties who have won their 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 pol their parts in the uh, election, mm -hmm. so how do you intend to work with them despite knowing that your policies were not the same? Yeah. Um. Now it has to do with you know uh, not party, but a union or a council. Uh, because, like I said, I always keep on saying this, the council is bigger than political parties. Mm -hmm. Now, after, you know, having crafting our policies, mm -hmm. we design our policies in a way that we believe will best suit mm -hmm. and solve the university problems. So in that, I believe it is significant. And I am an individual. Uh, this is not the first testament, you know, to work with uh, oppositions. Uh, at social level, uh, as the vice president, I work with oppositions. And I believe it went well because um, also you as a leader, you must be diverse in your opinion. You must be tolerant to ensure that, you know, you invite or welcome uh, other opinions, you know, that we believe um, can work according to the whims and aspirations of the entire student community. So working with uh, the coalition, you know, ministers, um, in fact, it has brought me joy because if you have, you know, a team of all the entire members from the same camp, who accounts who? You understand? You must have different opinions, you know, to get into consensus. And then people must have a different view in order to make a different um, opinions and make a consensus case as well. Thank you. So, Mr. Mr. President, with regards to your plan that you have for the University of the Gambia, what is the first plan that you will want to achieve as you are in power now? Yes, thank you so much. Um, with regards to policies, I crafted my policies um, as a development major, uh, we believed uh, politicians in our contemporary time will craft policies that we describe as, you know, symbolic policies. And uh, when you talk about symbolic policies, these are policies that deals with the psyche of the electorates in order for them to vote. But at the end of the day, they are not feasible, they are not attainable. But my policies are distributed. And when you look at the University of the Gambia, we have persistent problems that keep on, you know, emanating, that keep on evolving, that keep on, you know, happening. And therefore, first is part of, you know, the issue of transportation, the issue of portal system, mm -hmm. the issue of cost registration, grades issues, and other issues, you know, that may emerge. But we have issues that we believe remain persistent. And as the president-elect, mm -hmm. I believe first priority under my government mm -hmm. is to ensure that we ameliorate or, if possible, eradicate those problems as well, as earlier alluded in my, you know, statement that I've mentioned. So all other, you know, policies will come as secondary because we believe, you know, we have to come up with innovative plans in order to build a more sustainable university uh, community in promoting a conducive environment for every university student. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. President. Uh, with regard to the plan that you said, with the issue of the buses, what plan do you guys have? Or what do you think you can do to help with the issue of the buses? Because when we look at Students everywhere, they are complaining. Others mm -hmm. even cancel their courses. Uh, others defer their course or even cancel their classes just because they cannot have a boss to come to Faraba. So what do you have for them? Yeah, um, as social scientists, um, I believe uh, data is, should be respected. Data is what scientists use to solve our societal problems. Mm -hmm. And in that, I believe, um, as far as university is concerned, the total number of admitted university students must be presented to the, to the UTBRS those that are in charge of, you know, the transportation service, that is the Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology. So in that, that can able to resonate 
you know, to provide the available resources, you know, as far as, you know, transportation is concerned. Because um, the total number of buses that, you know, are disposed to uh, Faraba Bantang campus uh, do not tally with the available number present. If you look at it um, on Mondays to Saturday, you have a lot of students that attended lectures um, on Monday and Thursday. Monday and Thursday. Yeah. So you'll see that, you know, on Thursday, you have more people than the buses available. So as the president-elect, who is yet to assume power, I will ensure that, you know, data is presented before the UTBRS, you know, which means the right authorities to ensure that, you know, the available number of people, you know, tally with the number of buses, you know, available. We know that, you know, transportation remain a biggest challenge as far as university education is concerned because several factors, you know, are put into play. That is, you know, human behavior and science. You know, human behavior, the number of people every day, some students will have lectures, and sometimes after their lectures, they will not leave. They will be hanging around within the campus, you understand? And then therefore, you know, we are not considered in that. And also science, you know, looking at our transportation service, looking at our road facility, is not very conducive. Sometimes buses get delayed as a result of, you know, uh, these factors. So as the president-elect, I have considered all these factors, and, you know, when we are to meet the authorities, this is what we will present to ensure we ameliorate the problem of bus service. Okay, thank you, and sir. also sustainable transportation is part of it. We to promote um, um, comfortability, you know, conduciveness, you know, reliability, and even safety. It matters a lot. Um, I know that students around the world stand inside the bus. But uh, one thing that we must also factor is the safety of the university team. 22nd Executive Council. Uh, okay. Thank you so much, Nyanyinka. Uh, Mr. President, we thank Mr. President. According to some students, mm -hmm. some are like, buses do depart, like classes will close, and then they have to stand for 30 minutes before the buses will depart. And sometimes you will also have to wake up early in the morning, and then you go to the bus stops, and then wait for the bus for almost one hour. And then when you come to the campus also, you will have to wait for another one hour be before lectures start. So what do you have to say about that? Yeah, um, just that um, that is a very important question. Um, our individual desires is what makes us to um, pursue for this leadership position and the interest of the University of the Gambia is what interests us as people and therefore when you look at the issue of that you know schedule um, as president-elect I'm yet to assume power so um, all these things are factored out because equally your president also is a student and I've encountered this a lot so having a meeting with the duty BRS that is the university authorities all these things will be factored out but mind you also I believe in this holy month of Ramadan also, we have to look at, you know, the human aspect of it. That, you know, these bus drivers equally, they are human beings. And therefore, it is important to understand certain factors, you know. Um, that is why lectures are sometimes closing at, you know, 4.30, to give students the opportunity to also uh, relax before the bus depart. But we all know that, you know, lectures according to the timetable and the calendar, it should stop by 5. So I believe um, if... Um, we have to consider our individual desires. Also, we have to look at the general interest also as university community. Yeah. Thank you so much. So what the last question that I will have for you is, what message do you have for all the students of the University of the Gambia? Because you alone cannot achieve what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. But togetherness, you can achieve all. Mm -hmm. So what do you expect from them? Yeah. Yeah. Um, my expectation is for them to give me their undivided support. Uh, we cannot do it alone. And therefore, we are their representative. That does not mean that we are going to be there to make a decision independently. Um, the people are the most powerful, you know, uh, sector as far as, you know, leadership is concerned. Like I will always say, development is anthropocentric and people are the most significant stakeholders in attaining development goals. Therefore, what I want to tell the university students is that under my leadership, no individual will be left behind. You know, we'll tap into every potential to make sure that we have a more successful, you know, uh, council as far as, you know, university student uh, government is concerned. And one thing that I will send as a message to university student, as far as leadership is concerned, um, always respect one another, be steadfast, you know, be tolerant, and also listen to people, especially 
uh, people that you believe can add value to you. Um, my story can serve as an inspiration to the members of the University of the Gambia student body. Um, that um, I'm not saying I'm, I'm perfect, but um, I'm resilient and I listen to people a lot. And I respect individual diverse view. And therefore, if I am that individual um, who um, develop pomposity uh, or other egos as, as an individual, I don't believe a university students will go into the pools and vote me into power. So um, I believe that is significant. And also be respectful, no matter what. Because respect or discipline is you know, the bigger brain as far as leadership is concerned. Uh, with knowledge, if there is no um, discipline, it's like knowledge without wisdom. So we have to, as university students, uh, we have to be disciplined. Uh, we have to um, inculcate that moral attitude in us. And therefore, we can achieve a lot of goals as far as, you know, um, promoting our common goods and desire as of university students is concerned. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. President. And we appreciate having you here. The general uh, SS media are proud of you. And so once again, we congratulate you. This is the closing remark that you have for the, that you have to see. Yes, um, thank you so much uh, to university students and across. I wanted to say thank you all for going out to the pool and vote massively uh, for 22nd Executive Council under the leadership of uh, His Excellency, Mr. Nyanin Kamanjang. Even though I do not wish to use His Excellency on my nomenclature, I, I definitely believe that, you know, students have made an informed choice. And therefore, a lot is expected of us and we will never let you down. We will work because as enshrined in the constitution that we must preserve and protect your interests, even whereas it seems impossible for us as student government. So therefore, we will do everything humanly possible to stand by you, to fight for your right, to make sure that university becomes a safe space for you, a conducive learning environment. In that, we cannot do it alone. Therefore, we need you to join us in making sure that we write a history as 22nd Executive Council of University of the Gambia Student Body. Thank you. Thank you so much. We cannot do it alone. We need you guys to work in hand so that we will be able to achieve our goals, said by the President of the University of the Gambia. So viewers, as I said earlier, you are watching uh, SS Media, and today we have Nyaninka, that is the current President of the University of the Gambia, and we all heard what he said. In their policies and then how they are going to work towards achieving the aims of the University of the Gambia, in which is the reason why students vote for them. So on that note, we thank you all and hope to see you. <laughs>
Okay, thank you so much. And the SS Media are proud to have you here today. So, Abdullah, what different or well, like what what are the problems that students are facing in the University of the Gambia with your year of experience? Uh, we have been facing many challenges, but uh, the biggest challenge we are facing is transportation challenges. Like sometimes you will see most of the students, uh, they will be coming to school late, uh, especially the 8 o'clock class. Because if you look at times, 8 o'clock class, some people will miss the whole class, some people will miss one hour, 30 minutes of the class, some people will miss at least one hour of the class. It differ, it differ time to time. But sometimes you will come and get buses early, sometimes you come, there will be no buses available. All the buses will be filled up at Westfield and uh, especially the Westfield routes. Because I use the Westfield routes most of the time and the Tabakoto picking point. So most of the time, the buses will come and stop. You will only pick two, three students, they'll tell you it is full. So we have to wait those buses to go and offload those students at the campus. Then they come back to pick us. So when we should have the same time and the same class with those people. So you'll see that before we reach, sometimes we'll reach and find the lecturer is just wrapping up. Sometimes we'll find lecturer is in the middle of the lectures. So we'll just sit down and continue the class. After the class, we'll have to go and find our friends and copy from them. So it's one of the major constraints. Secondly, also, we have the concern of the blackboards. Because the size of the blackboards are very small. And sometimes you go to a class, you will not have blackboards. You have to come and find blackboards. You roam to, from class to class. If you have any class that is empty, you pick a blackboard from there, then you transport it to your class. After using it, some people also may come and track it and take it again. So, Ms. Abdallah, with regards to the buses, like you said that you normally go and like you stand there for a long period of time and yet still you will be late to go to school or you will be late for lectures. So if you are supposed to have a class by in the, by 8 or in the morning, what time do you normally leave home? Uh, I normally left home uh, after praying the Fajr prayer because I usually take bath before praying Fajr prayer. Then I'll go to the mosque. After the mosque, I'll just continue to the picking point. Sometimes we'll be there by 6.35. Sometimes we'll be there by 6.40, 6.45, it differs, depending on the time you finish preparation. But most of the time, sometimes they will go there, they will tell you, ah, there was a boss at Tabokoto. But the boss, the exact departing time, you will not know. I used to tell them, it's a ghost boss. Because you will find others there, they'll tell you, I was here since 6. Did you have any boss? They say, no, there was no boss. But if you come to the student union and ask them, they tell you, we deploy boss, or we call at the depot they told me that they deploy bus at Tabokoto when there was no bus to be honest sometimes the bus drivers also will come and pass if they reach here they will tell the student union that we don't find any student at Tabokoto so, it's so sad so meaning some people will be there by five six and then yet still they will be late for lectures yeah. that is so sad so Abdullah you are with the experience that you have as a final year student how do you see the conditions like from Carnifin to the University of the Gambia, what are some of the differences that you see? Uh, the difference, like the movement of the... the... movement of people, like having a lectures in Faraba and having a lectures in Carnifin, which one is more congestive? Uh, I usually, I don't, usually I never attend class at uh, Carnifin. I used to attend it at Brikama. What is difficult? How do you see it with Brikama and here? Yeah, here is better than Brikama if there is enough transportation. Why, why do you say that here is better than uh, Birkama? What are the things that here have and Birkama doesn't have? Yeah, here we have enough classes that we can come and you know your class exactly. But in Birkama, we follow the classes. We find a class. Sometimes your class will be allocated for this room, but you'll come to that room, there will be no class there. Or sometimes the college tell you, okay, we are going to use that room. So we have to move. Because I can remember in my second year, we were having tests. College students came to chase us out of this class. They are telling us, we give you five minutes. If you don't finish your test, we are going coming in. So we have to wrap up the test and we give out our scripts. So you see that in Fraba, you have your time and you have your classes very well. You have enough space. But the transportation is the main problem. And sometimes, at times, water it fluctuates. Water is also fluctuate sometimes. But the main problem is the transportation. Yeah. So thank you so much, Abdullah. So what message do you have to the students and the SU in general, student union? Uh, I will just tell them to keep managing with it. Yeah, always the force people to come to any innovation or pioneer anything is always a problem. You will encounter a lot of challenges. But I believe by the next two, three years, if we come back or in the next 10 years, if you come back here and tell people we struggle for bosses, they may not believe you. Because we are the first people to come in. 
so we need to just be patient but we need to understand each other also because it is not our own fault sometimes it is not up to our power if it is up to our power to pay fair and come we can pay fair like if it is from Brikama to other places we can pay fair and go to school but here it is too far sometimes if you miss a bus you miss a lecture so we'll just say the students let us be patient and we give helping hands to the student unions and we support the government we see for better future inshallah thank you so much and we were happy to have you here Adam. Hello. How are you? Vice President. Yes. Can we please have some words with you, please? Uh, I am busy. I have to uh, I help people arrange themselves yet. So, all these buses are gone, and then yet still there are other people standing. Why? Why are people standing? Yeah. Inadequate resources. Okay. In so, they, they are not adequate buses. Yes. So, you and your other team members, what are you going to do when you we guys come into the over. We are yet to be inaugurated. We still have the 21st Executive Council. Okay. So, what do you have? What plan do you have for them when you come into town? First, we have to uh, establish the facts about the bosses, okay. whether they are available or not. If they are not available, we seek for a, a step to see the management, then talk about it. I learned that the management is working with the, with Moha, Mohas alongside GTSC. So, Thank you so much. So what do you have for the youth regarding this boss before you guys can... Let them be patient. Them. Let them be patient. Let us be patient. Not them, all of us. We have to be patient. Thank you so yes. much. Will you please introduce yourself so we know who... I am Yunus Ambai, the senator of the UTJSU. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> As, as we are in the uh, UTG bus, camp, uh, bus station, here we have still some students who are yet to go, uh, like who are yet to have buses that will be able to take them home. And then they are here waiting for invisible buses. So you see the this cube that we were just seeing here, the bus is already full, yet still all these people have to enter in the bus. So meaning the bus is really going to be tight for, 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 for them. And others that do not want to face this problem because others complain of having chest pain, asthma, and the like. So those people are the ones that we have there sitting and then making keep for invisible buses, buses that you know that we are not seeing them. So that's the uh, situation that we are facing here right now.